This is one of multiple videos discussing static routing. So notice what happens now when we configure a default route to 10.1.1.1, but specify an admin distance of, say, 100. And that should be the next top router, 10.1.1.2, with an admin distance of 100. So do show IP route. We've got a route in the routing table. Notice the admin distance is 100, whereas previously the admin distances of the routes was 1. So 1 shown here. The router can ping the loopback of router 5. And when we trace to the loopback, it's going via router 2. And that should be expected because that's the route that we have in the routing table. What happens when we add a static route to router 3, but with an admin distance of 150? And let's add router 4 with an admin distance of 200. What do you think the routing table is going to look like? So show IP route only shows the route to router 2. And that's because it's got to the lowest administrative distance. So when we trace to the loopback of router 5, it's going via router 2. But the running config shows us that there are three routes in the running config. So this is a way to implement a preferred path, which is router 2, and then a backup path and a second backup. What will happen now is router 2 will be used as the primary path because that's the only route in the routing table. But when we shut an interface down, so I'll shut down gigabit 00, the link to router 2, we can see the interface has gone down. When we type show IP route, notice the route has changed to go to 10122. It has a high administrative distance, but that's a lower than the administrative distance via router 4. So now traffic goes via router 3. Again, in the running config, we've got three routes. And this route is the route being used at the moment because the link to this next top router is down because the interface is administratively down. So the router can see that this IP address is on an interface that's down, and that IP address is on the same subnet as this IP address. So that route is removed from the routing table, and this route is put in to the routing table. So again, the static route via 10.1.2.2 is in the routing table. Now, if we shut gigabit 01 down, what we should see is that the third route appears in the routing table, and it does. Traffic is now going to go via router 4, which it does. It goes to 10.1.3.2 and then on to router 5. So again, we can still ping the loopback of router 5, but the traffic is taking a different path. Notice the administrative distance of this route is 200. The next hop is 10132. So if we now no shut gigabit 01, in other words, enable that interface, what we should see is that the path changes, and it has. It's now going via 10122 because that has a low administrative distance. And if we no shut gigabit 00, traffic should switch back to 10112, which it has. So administrative distances in this way are often used to select a primary path, backup path, and an alternate backup path. This could be an MPLS link. This could be a good internet connection. And this could be a not so good internet connection. 
So we've got three paths to get to our destination. And we'll choose this primary path first, but if it's not available, then this path. And if that's not available, then we'll choose this path. Now static routes don't work that well in that they will only be removed from the routing table if the local interface goes down. So as an example, if I shut down this link, traffic would still go via router two and would end up in a black hole. So as an example, I'll send a thousand pings to router five. Before I start that ping, I'll get router two ready. So interface gigabit zero one. Notice we are pinging, but if I shut that interface down, the pings start failing. We get an unreachable message. Router one configured with static routes doesn't realize that there's a problem elsewhere in the network. So it's still forwarding traffic to 10.1.1.2, even though that link is down. Router two in this case is running a routing protocol. So it can dynamically change its behavior, but a router with static routes doesn't do that. And that's a reason why you run dynamic routing protocols. So when the interface came up again, router one was able to ping router five. If I start that again and shut the interface down now, it doesn't dynamically shift traffic to an alternate path. So that is a disadvantage of static routes. They are static by nature. They don't dynamically change based on network conditions. They'll only reroute if the local interface goes down. But if these interfaces are up, the route is unaware of problems elsewhere in the network. But if we were running a dynamic routing protocol, it would dynamically adjust to network conditions. So dynamic routing protocols such as EIGRP, OSPF, and BGP are better than running static routes when you want your network to dynamically adjust to network conditions. I hope you found this video useful. If it was of benefit to you, please like it. And please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.